gentlemen, welcome back. It is Thursday. I have tight ends and defenses coming at you in this video. I am going over the top 15 options for each of them to try to give you all the information you need to make better decisions, hopefully go get a dub and keep moving towards that playoff spot. Please drop any comments down below if you have start sit questions, you're wondering about making moves for trades, whatever it is, I promise you I will get back in a reasonable amount of time and I answer every single question and comment that I get. I don't know who else does that, but I know that I do. Now, if you haven't done it yet, smashing the like button for me would be greatly appreciated helps keep the content moving forward and sharing it to others. And please consider subscribing to the channel as well. That also makes a heck of a difference. And enough selling you the goods, let's get into tight ends. Starting off tier number one for me, is Travis Kelsey. He has finished as a top three play in every game this season but one, and he went for 50 plus yards in that contest. He is unstoppable, and that is all. To two it is Mark Andrews. He gets Cleveland. He continues to try and keep pace with Kelsey. He's racked up 21 targets, 195 yards, and two scores in his last two games. To tier number two, I have George Kittle back in the top three. I done told you that last week against Atlanta, he would break out and he did. He turned 10 targets into 83 yards and he finished as the tight end six on the week. He restored some faith to owners who desperately needed it after flirting with respectability for the last three weeks prior. Now we probably will not see a Kittle versus Kelsey battle, but I would definitely pay to if it's available. At number four, I have Zach Ertz against New Orleans. He has 10 targets or more in four out of his last five games, and I do not expect him to see a change, even though Nuke is coming back. He is the clear number two, but sooner rather than later, maybe Rondale Moore will try to take that spot from him. David Njoku rounds out my top five. He continues to operate as the 1B in this passing attack for Cleveland, and he showed some big play ability against the Patriots. He averaged nearly 20 yards a catch. To tier number three, Gerald Everett kicks it off. The Hawks allow more points per game to the position than anybody, so that is a very good start. Everett is also due for a solid week after going quiet in three out of his last four. I like his chances to produce a big time stat line against Seattle. My seventh ranked player is Kyle Pitts against Cincinnati. He certainly did not break out last week, but it was still really nice for him to find the end zone. It salvaged his day and perhaps restored some hope a la George Kittle to his owners. It is really hard to move the ball against Cincinnati, but it is easier to do it with the tight end position than any other against this team. To my number eight spot, it is TJ Hawkinson against Dallas. The Cowboys are a top five unit at stopping the position, but I think the pressure that Goff faces is gonna force him to get rid of it quickly and find Hawkinson underneath, who will gladly scoop up a ton of targets. On to Pat Fryermuth. He is on track to play against the Dolphins this week, and he should regain his role as the best red zone target in Pittsburgh. Miami gave up a tutty last week to Irv Smith of my Vikings, and they allow the seventh most points to tight ends. To the top of tier four, rounding out my top 10 is Robert Tanyan. He gets Washington. He saw a whopping 12 targets against the Jets after getting just 13 in his previous three weeks combined. He is going to be featured more often now that Randall Cobb has been injured. However, I do not expect double digit targets coming his way again anytime soon. Next up is Evan Ingram. He averaged eight targets per over his last two games. He's turned those into 109 yards on 11 receptions. The Giants also allow over 11 points per game to tight ends, so he's going to post his second top 10 finish in his last three games. Headlining tier number five, I have Hayden Hurst against Atlanta. He keeps you away from the dreaded goose, so we love that. And with a top five matchup against the Falcons, he has some upside here as well. To my lucky number 13, who wasn't so much so last week, it's Taysom Hill. He showed us the reason why you do not chase 
the points. But he still saw five carries last week, so it wasn't all bad. He is a boom and bust play yet again, but his chances are better than usual because there are a ton of banged up playmakers for the Saints. To the top of tier number six, I have Hunter Henry, who has finally shown us some consistency. He posted back-to-back -back games now with 50 plus yards, and he's flexed a 20% or more target share in those games. He is a solid dart throw. The last tight end that I am looking at is Daniel Bellinger, and I know this much. Somebody in New York has to catch the friggin' football, so it might as well be this guy. He has a touchdown in back-to-back -back weeks, and he has the athleticism to contribute exactly where New York needs it the most. With tight ends done, this is a great time to remind you I drop content Monday to Saturday. Working my butt off here to bring you guys all of the content that you need. So please consider subscribing to the channel for me. You won't miss anything that way. I drop it at 12 p.m. Pacific so that that consistency is there and the content is there when you need it. All right, enough of that, on to defenses. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers are at the top of tier number one. This one is pretty simple. P.J. Walker was 10 out of 16 for 60 yards last week against the Rams. The Bucs need a win here in the worst way. I will take the layup. At two, I have the New England Patriots against Chicago. And to headline tier number two at three is the Green Bay Packers against Washington. The Denver Broncos are next, and at five, I have the Dallas Cowboys against Detroit. Now, this offense for the Lions has been scary at times, but they have also shown that they can completely bottom out like they did against the Patriots, and the Cowboys are good enough to hold them, at worst, to somewhere in the middle of that. At the top of tier number three, and at six, is the Cincinnati Bengals, and at seven, I have the Baltimore Ravens. They get a home matchup with Cleveland. The Miami Dolphins are next. They are at home against Pittsburgh. And at nine, I have the New York football giants against the Jacksonville Jaguars. This is all about Trevor Lawrence, who always has the option, it seems, of becoming a turnover machine. And also the Giants have racked up four fumble recoveries, a pick, and 10 sacks over the last three. Same game, other sideline, I have the Jacksonville Jags at 10, and at 11, it is the New Orleans Saints against Arizona. Don't feel great about it with how they've played. However, the Cardinals offense hasn't looked great either. To the 12 spot, it is the New York Jets against Denver. They have been dominant over the last three games. Gang Green has not surrendered over 20 points in any of those contests, and they finished top eight in every one in that span. So this just must be a New York thing. At the top of tier five is the Los Angeles Chargers at home against Seattle, and at 14 is the Tennessee Titans at home against Indy. The last defense that I have as startable in week number seven are the Las Vegas Raiders at home against Houston. They stop the run better than anything else. We know that is exactly what the Texans want to do. And if they can keep Damian Pierce bottled up, I can see a scenario where they have a solid day. And that will do it for today's video. Hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed the content. Let me know what you think about my rankings down below. Whether you troll me or not, that is up to you. I will still respond to you and I'll try to be as nice as possible even if you are not. Smash the like button for me. Subscribe to the channel. This is Relentless Press. I am your host, Abraham Opatz, and we'll see you next time.